Hi there, Lindsay here, the Frugal Crafter, with another craft and art storage video for you. Uh, right now, we're going to talk about storing your rubber stamps and your clear stamps. And I've been stamping a long time, so I have a lot of stamps. So I think I've got some pretty good ideas on how you can um, store yours in whatever space you have. I know a lot of people have left comments that they're working in a very small space. I'm working in a quarter of my basement, um, so I do have a little more room, but um, no heat, so you know, <laughs> kinda, kinda give a little, get a little, I guess. Um, so probably what I use most to store my stamps are those binders on my desk. If you look over there, you can see them. And what I've done here, and excuse the coat, it's just very chilly down here. Um, I have separated my stamps by theme. I used to have them by manufacturer when I was um, guess when I was getting started and doing a lot of design team work. But then, when I was going to put together a card and I wanted to find like a happy birthday stamp or a um, Merry Christmas stamp, I was having a very hard time just coming up with that stamp. So then um, I decided I was going to divide them all by theme instead of by. Um, manufacturer. So this is my Christmas and winter binder. So it's labeled on the side. That's the most important thing. Label it so you know what's in there. It doesn't have to be fancy or pretty. You just need to know. Um, it's nice that it looks nice because then you'll be more likely to use it. So this is my Christmas and winter. So I have all of my Christmas and winter stamps in page protectors. For those little dollar stamps, I just use trading card holders. Um, you can also buy like storage sheets, which are like a heavy laminated cardboard or plastic, like right here. This one I think is a Sunday International one. It's like a plastic sheet that you could put your uh, stamps on. So that's how I store all my clear and unmounted stamps. And I do have a video on how I sorted them all when I changed from going to manufacturer-based storage to theme-based storage. So um, if you look in the video description below, I'll have links on that. I apologize if it's a little dark here. I had to move my lighting around a little bit, and I know it's a little... Um, it's a little dark, but I think I think that the part I'm trying to show you is bright. So hopefully that's okay and you'll be able to uh, see see what I'm showing you. The next thing I wanted to share were these letterpress trays back here. And I picked up those at yard sales. Um, and I'll zoom in a little bit so you can see that a little bit better. They're really great because um, they have all these little compartments. And you can fit small sentiments and alphabet sets in here these like little ribbon stamps. I took my um, sentiment stamps actually that were in sets and I mounted them on these little Jenga blocks. And these aren't even real Jenga blocks. They're like the generic Jenga blocks from the uh, from the toy store. So it was like, I don't know, four or five bucks and you got like, I don't know, 60 of them or however many is in there. Um, and then I just stamped on them on the opposite side, but they were so it was easy to use. I like having my sentiments like this because when I'm making a card, I don't want to have to sift through binders to find the stamp that I want. I want to just like look up here. Oh, it's a thank you. I'm going to grab that and go. I also love these little dollar. Well, this one's not a dollar one. This is an older uh, personal stamp um, one, but I love these little peg mount stamps because you can stamp whatever sentiment you want really quickly and easily. Uh, the downside, and you probably just saw it a second ago, was when I tipped them over and they fell off the shelf. I ended up making some little origami boxes to fit these so they were a little looser and easier to take the stamps out of, but then they don't hold them as tight, so they tend to fall out sometimes. Not a huge deal, but I guess it could be annoying if it happened several times a day, so just, uh, just to let you know that. And um, I have a few, the, the downside to this is that the, the segments, the little uh, compartments are kind of small, so I can't put my really big sentiments on there, so that's kind of a drag. Um, I just picked up a couple more sentiment sets from a friend of mine who's a retired Stampin' Up! person, and she was getting rid of some of her older sets, and I, they don't fit, but I want to keep my sentiments together, so they're just sitting here right now until I can think of um, how better to store them. So if you have suggestions for that, just uh, let me know. I'm not going to unmount them because I like my sentiments mounted. That's why I mounted some of my unmounted sentiments. Um, all right. Oh, I have some other stamps I want to show you how I store. Let me zoom out a little bit here again. Here we go. I love my little mannequins on there. It's kind of funny. All right. So here, this is a bench down here that my husband built. And I like it because it's got really big, deep shelves. And the uh, benefit of that is that I can um, store bins full of stuff. So this bin here is um, a bunch of foam alphabet stamps and smaller alphabet stamps, but they were too big to put up on my my uh, letterpress shelves. I took the making. I, I love those making memory foam stamps that came out. Gosh, I don't know when they came out. It was, it was probably early 2000, 2001, somewhere around there. 
and I like them because they were less expensive than rubber stamps, but I could still ink them up with ink or paint or whatever I want. Stamp them on scrapbook pages or cards. They were really big, so they were great for scrapbooking or home decor. Um, and I think I got probably every style they made, and I still use them quite frequently. I really like them. But I found them really hard to get in and out of the plastic boxes. I think I might have a set still in, a, in one of the boxes that I can show you. Um, yeah, this one right here. These are the boxes that used to come in, but they were really hard to, especially when you had like 26 letters, to get them in and out. And there was usually an upper and lower case double mounted, but it was really, really kind of a pain. So I took them and I put them in baggies, all the alphabets, and then I took the numbers separately and I put them, all the numbers in one big bag of numbers, which is right here. Numbers and, and uh, like uh, characters that weren't like regular ones, I think. Actually, I don't know, I might have kept like the ampersands and stuff with their with their um, font, but it's just easy. If I know I need a number, I just go through here and I can find exactly the font that I want. And all the other alphabets are stored with their fonts. And then I've got some smaller, I think these were um, personal stamp exchange actually. I love them. I'm so sad that they went out of business because they had some really great stamps. But anyway, all these down here in these bins are large alphabet stamp sets that wouldn't fit in my letterpress. And so that's, and I, and I also have some other ones here. They came in really nifty little containers. So since they were in a nifty little separated container like this, I didn't see the point to take it apart because I would not find a storage solution that was better than what it already had. So it's really important that you kind of look at each stamp set and say, well, would it be better to make it conform to a storage system I already have going? Or is it better just to leave it in, leave it how it comes? Is that the best way for me to use that? There are so many different methods for uh, stamping. I remember like, uh, I think it was Making Memories came out with a magnetic stamp mount um, system and it was like the only company that had that and it was really specific and not very useful because you couldn't really see where you were stamping. It didn't really have a cushion on it. It was kind of a big pain really. Um, so in that case, I just unmounted those and put them on clean cushion and they're in my binders because that made way more sense to me than keeping it in a system that I didn't really feel worked for me. All right, so I'm gonna set these back down here and I'm gonna show you another way that I store my unmounted stamps. And again, it's because that's how they came and it made sense for me to keep them that way. These here on the shelf over near my beading stuff that I showed you the other day, um, these are Stampin' Up! sets that are in DVD cases. And I really like it, but I'm going to show you something else that I did here with these. Um, like this one in particular, this is a little, um, little set with some ice cream and things like that. And I also had a little ice cream set that was from... We are memory keepers, I think, and uh, or it was oh, it was a little cupcake set, but I thought the little toppers and the cupcakes look like they could be. I don't know if you can see that, but um, they look like they could be ice cream tops, and I thought, well, that would be really cute to use with this stamp set. So I just popped it right in there with it, you know. So that's what I do if I have uh, stamps that seem like they would go together really well and almost make a really good set. I just put them right in the case um, if I'm storing it like this, or in the binder pocket where I'm storing, you know, if I'm storing it in binders. So make sure it works for you. If you're gonna make, get more use out of a stamp set if you break it up and you store it with different sets, do it that way. You know, it takes a little courage to break up your stamp sets, but it's totally worth it. Now sometimes I make my own stamps. I have uh, one of those um, UV light kits, the Teresa Collins stamp maker, and sometimes I make stamps if I need, if I know I need something detailed that I'm gonna use over and over again. And so when I do that, I store them in the DVD cases that the stamp packets come in that you make the stamps with because they, they come in these little cases. So I figured it was a shame to, um, to waste them. So like I have some like little vintage, you know, clip art stamps that I made and I just put them right back in the case and I label, I turn the, the uh, label around. This is the label, but I turn, but this is the back side of the label and I just slide it back in here and wrote vintage and steampunk on there. And then I know what's in there. And also I can, it's easy to remember because I know if I made the stamp with a stamp maker, it's kind of an aggravating process. So I tend to remember anytime I use it very vividly. Um, that's why there's only five binder, five little DVD cases of these. Um, I, I tend to remember what stamps, what those stamps are and that they are, uh, they're right there with their labels. Another uh, method for storing stamps that I've made, which would be my hand carved stamps, are in these really shallow um, boxes. And there was a stamp company called um, Ink Boutique that 
uh, their stamps came in these really shallow CD sized boxes so they would fit in like CD storage. These are great for my hand carved stamps as some that I've made there just with like the easy cut rubber from Dick Blick or Utrecht Art or Speedball and um, they're right there and I again I remember because you know it's a little labor intensive I remember the stamps that I hand carved and I know right where to find them because they're right here and then there was one stamp set that I just couldn't figure out exactly what I wanted to do with it it was a uh, purple onion design stamps and it's this really bodacious big vintage calendar and so I put that in one of these too because I could keep it together and I figured if I was going to use this then I'd use all this together Honestly, I actually completely forgot about it and I just saw it for the first time in two years, so <laughs> it pays to do these storage videos because then I find the stuff that I completely forgot about. Um, okay, so now I want to show you how I store my wood mounted stamps in my stamp wheel. I'm going to pause it so I can set my lighting up over there and we'll be right back in a moment because it's YouTube, so it'll really be a moment. All right, we're rolling again. I just blinded myself because I've got a light, light right there that I just turned around. I know I looked like a ghost. I'm like... Woo, crafty floating ghost. Um, so I had to move a couple lights, my fancy hardware store clip lights over here so that it would illuminate the wooden stamps. Um, I want to show you this. I almost forgot that I wanted to show you this. This is a, um, a calendar frame. I don't know if you've ever seen them, but if you, um, they're just like a wooden frame that, that you can like put a store-bought calendar in and it just... I don't know, probably saves it so like the edges of the calendar don't curl up and stuff. You know how calendars do. Um, so I took it and um, I asked my husband to put a piece of plywood in the back to reinforce it and then he hammered nails, you can see there, he hammered nails in from the back in a very, he measured and everything, I would have just he kind of slapped him in there, but he measured it so it actually fits very perfectly. And um, then I put my stamp wheels on there. So I've got all these um, different designs, Stampin' Up, Stampin' Around and Rollograph stamp wheels. I really enjoy using them and this way I can easily find exactly what I want and then some, I noticed that the um, Sculpey clay mats, I think it's a Sculpey or the Colorbox Max, one of those mats, one of those companies, their mats are the exact same size as these wheels so I actually put some double sided tape on one and then I, I go through and I um, I stick them down and I can use them for stamp wheels as well. And I also keep a regular, just a plain one. I put some drywall mesh on this to make kind of a gritty stamp. So I kind of also like the fact that I can play with these and um, experiment with them. I got a whole box full of the uh, empty wheels once from a viewer who had unmounted all hers. Cause that's another idea. If you don't like this, if this is too bulky and you don't like using the roller stamps, you could take these right off, just heat it with a heat gun, pull them right off. And um, you could put, cling cushion on there or some tack it over and over glue on the back and let it dry and use it just like a cling stamp. So this takes up too much room. If you don't like using roller stamps but you have a bunch or you find some on a yard sale or you, you end up with a bunch of them and you don't want to use a roller, um, that's a great idea. I actually keep my roller handle right over here and in my little shoe hanger pockets. You'll probably see that. In a, I'm sure you've seen that in the craft room tours before. But um, so I just keep those right over there. They're like two feet away, easy to grab. And I even have those really skinny wheels. Here's one of them. Um, and these are like the builder wheels. You can put a couple wheels together and make some cool designs. And those are by Stampin' Up. And I, I just can't resist the new stamp wheels. I, I love them. I think they're really fun. I don't use them as much as I should though. I mean, I should challenge myself. When I'm doing this video, all those things you haven't seen me use like ever, you should say, Lindsay, do a video on that. Or have you ever actually used that? You guys could totally call me out on it because, you know, I'm guilty when it comes to the uh, having supplies and not using them sometimes. You just kind of forget about them, I think, sometimes. Okay. Now this, and I will talk about this because this is the most... You ever have um, non-buyer's remorse, like you wish you bought something that you didn't? I got this shelf for $5 at this woman's basement yard sale. She used to own a stamping store and, um, and she stamped for a hobby and then she decided to uh, retire with her husband in an RV and just begin beating and get rid of all of her stamps. So she had a bunch of these and I only bought one. It was $5. I kick myself every time I look at that. Why did I buy two? Um, but all my wooden mount mounted stamps are here pretty much except for the alphabets that I showed you and I have them divided by like I have my big backgrounds on the top and then I have some vintage stuff and vintage more vintage nature uh, house mouse and other cute animal stamps like these are the ones my kids really love to use for birthday cards and I really love to use for coloring um, then I've got my smaller nature stamps 
and uh, more nature and steampunk. And as you get to the bottom, then I have my seasonal stamps, such as like Christmas. Like I showed you my big basket of Christmas stamps um, last month. I put all those in one basket and oh my goodness. Oh, I was just looking at the time. It's 50, I thought it was like 20 minutes and I've gone to a new fund. Never mind. <laughs> Um, so I keep all my Christmas stuff on the bottom because I only need to get to it once a year and like this year I threw it all in a basket and kept it right on my table so I could find those Christmas stamps really easily. Um, but I think that's pretty much it. That's how I store all my stamps. If you have any questions, go ahead and leave them below and I can help you out. I haven't had any problems with them being downstairs in my basement. It doesn't fluctuate too much here because um, my husband has his workshop over there. I'm in here every day. This The basement has a lot of uh, ventilation, a lot of action going on. So nothing really gets closed up and musty or anything. But if you have any questions, please let me know with a comment below. I'm going to do another video on how I store my inks and embossing powders and flocking and accessories like that. So please stay tuned for that. And until uh, next time. Happy crafting. Thank you so much for watching. Bye.